The best tip I can give you to doing business with, with EPA is knowing our mission, knowing what we do and how we do it and what's important to us. I would suggest everyone to take a look at our strategic plan. It's on our website. If you want to know where our resources will be dedicated, that in addition to our forecast are your best guideposts for knowing how to approach EPA and knowing what's important to us. The USDOT has an aggressive outreach program and they do all they can to make sure that there's opportunities in place. Quite frankly, there's more opportunities than there are contractors, at least in our market. So we see that as great opportunity. We see the opportunity to, to be a part of this, this growth that America is experiencing now. But my advice is to be prepared. They have bonding and, and, and capital programs that will prepare you. Uh, as, as my colleague said, be honest with your capabilities. Be aggressive with your mentality and your passion for your business. And, 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 and just execute. I think that's the key. The projects are typically large, large projects, but they are broken down into packaging strategies. So I would advise all of you to look at ways to build relationships if you don't have that capacity gain that capacity. If you don't have that relationships, build that relationship and you'll be successful if you follow uh, the money uh, to the project. How best to approach us? Um, like I think uh, Kimberly said earlier, uh, you know, learn about us, do your homework before you come see us. If you go to USAID.gov, there is just a wealth of information about what we do and the types of opportunities that we have. Take a look at the business forecast. We have a forecast, a domestic forecast, as well as one by our missions. So if you want to target a specific country, say in Africa, or Latin America, Asia, um, you can see the forecast for that particular mission. Um, and there's a lot more small business opportunities now than there used to be a few years ago. Another important thing, and I will pass on the mic quickly, um, is to get to know us. You know, obviously we do business with people that we know uh, and that we uh, you know, that we have a relationship with. So come to our events. Uh, the keynote speaker this morning, Mr. Ira Koretsky, uh, telling the, identifying the story, telling giant in yourself. Just in that session, I identified several firms that do business not with the core, but for other agencies, but definitely have the capabilities to do work with us. And I thought that was an excellent session. And that's something we're here to do, is how to discover industry and how to better partner with you. The best way to get to it is this. We have a market research database. Have you ever thought about what we do with your business cards and capability briefs when we come here to these conferences to meet with you? And do you ever wonder if we're getting that information into the right hands? Well. I discovered at our Fort Worth district that they have a database that is live, it's dynamic. You can tailor your capabilities briefing and upload it into this database and give me all the information about yourself to include your NAICs, your niches, and that database in turn is used internally for market research by the contracting officers, by the project engineers, the program managers, the very people you want to meet with. So these are the couple things I like to see happen. In your pitch, I want you to tell me who you are. And as my grandmother say, who is you, okay? <laughs> who are you? I mean, and that basically is simply this. John and I do the same job, but our story is different. So, so when you're telling me your pitch, you should tell me your story. What led you to the point of where you are right now? Part two, what is it that you do, that, that you do very well that no one else can duplicate? Or what is it that you do that stands out from everyone else? You know, shining star right there. That's really important. And the last part of it is, convince me why I should take a risk on you. Out of everyone else, why should I set aside time to sit down and explain to you how we actually do business or rep you in, in, a, in a potential procurement opportunity? What I'd like to see happen in, in, in this conference in the next couple days is that you connect with each other that, that are actually in this room. Because the next opportunity may not come from me. It may come from the person who's sitting next to you or behind you that basically may have a relationship with someone and the agency that you're trying to get to. One of the things that the Ozzabu does is we're advocates for you all, for small businesses. Businesses. So if you see an RFI or sources sought, sent out, and it's just, you know, to you, just as ridiculous. Contacting, if you don't feel comfortable contacting the contracting officer, contact the OSDABU and say, we feel that this is a little burdensome for us to be able to respond to. And we can certainly, you know, <laughs> go and ask the contracting officer and use a little finesse to say, well, why are we doing that? The other thing I want to say quickly is that you have to respond and ensure that your competitors respond. 
because sometimes your competitors become your ally in ensuring rule of two and that there can be a set aside. Just Approximately $51 billion in products and services are purchased every year through the schedules program to support agencies and meet their mission needs. 80% of that amount of money goes to small business. Now, what's not there to love about that? That would be enough incentive. I talked to a lady today who I've known for years now, and she's still pondering about the schedule. And, and now she's getting unhappy because she seems to be on the sidelines and in her industry. So I'm telling you, you can come to an event once, twice, three times in three years, and there will be a percentage of you that will say, I'm still pondering it. And then there's all these other people that have just moved right ahead, did their due diligence, and got on the schedule and moved forward. The schedule was brought about in the early 90s to help break the ceiling so that small businesses could get ahead. And it's done that. It's been a remarkable product. We're in the I agree with all the comments that have been made, but let me, let me leave you with this. You should always be selling. Okay, I don't know what else you're doing, but you should always be a sales pitch in whatever it is that you're doing. So I, I always say that you should be tactfully persistent when you're trying to reach out for us. But you know, you have 24 of these major agencies, and, and there are numerous small business specialists that you could be connecting with and reaching out to. Everybody wants to start at the top, though. Nobody wants to start at the bottom. You know, you got to start at the bottom and work your way up. You only takes one person to 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 believe in you and represent you.